Uh, Japanese Japanese mummies are extremely rare, so I just want to tell you a little bit about how you can get to be a Japanese mummy. If you take one Japanese mummy for you, uh, put him on the donut for a thousand days of nothing but nuts and a concoction which is pretty much blamish and arsenic. And after excruciating pain, if he's extremely lucky, he might become a Japanese mummy. Now this is very like open source development out there on the internet. I mean, it's literally, uh, there are thousands of kind of decaying corpses of open source projects that never quite made it. They, they just kind of died in the but sometimes, sometimes, something is uh, it's interesting enough, it's useful enough, and it's popular enough that a community sort of forms around it. And it's these communities that need nurturing. So in the old days, we used to think a lot about things like uh, infrastructure, like mailing lists, and how we're going to download and distribute and everything else. These days, that's pretty much free. And what we really need are enthusiastic people, people who give a damn about the project, who use the project every day and want to see it succeed. So it's actually really easy to start. You can ask questions, and it's incredible how, uh, how much asking questions can invigorate a development community, because it tells you two things. One, that people are actually using the product, and two, that they care enough to actually ask a question about that product. So once you've uh, you know, had a few questions answered for you, you might become a kind of a citizen of that community and use your power to address some of the kind of emotional and technical support issues and take that away from the development team. Another way of looking at things is uh, documentation. The Achilles heel of pretty much any open source project out there. Technical writers are extremely hard to find. They're like gold dust. If you can write documentation, that's fantastic. Of course, not many of us do that, but uh, even less, we should read the documentation because less people do that than you would imagine. Reading documentation that's there is critical. And a lot of the things that you can do in terms of documentation is actually just tell people why documentation sucks or what's wrong with it. Be critical. Be an editor for your community. Bugs. One of the fundamental things about software in general is bugs. They all exist. But the important thing to remember is that popular bugs get fixed. Unpopular bugs, they kind of go unseen and are left behind. Report bugs. Critical to actually tell people there are problems. But when you report a bug, make sure you take the time to actually describe how that bug uh, can be reproduced. If you can't reproduce a bug, it won't be fixed. And if you have an actual fix for a bug, for God's sake, give it back to the community. There's nothing worse than people who port bugs. Of course, some of us aren't developers, but we can still ask for new features. And if somebody goes to the trouble of actually building that new feature, you might take the time yourself to actually test and make sure that the project is actually moving along the way that you think it should move along. If you're a new developer and you can actually build your own features, one of the things you need to look at is talking to the existing committers in that project. Nothing worse than submitting some code and it gets rejected to somebody else's building. Who determines what gets rejected, what doesn't get rejected, the benevolent dictator of any of these projects? Whether it's an individual or a committee, uh, there's someone there who has to take ownership and lead that particular community. If you don't, bad things can happen. For example, uh, Mambo. Uh, back in 2005, they had falling out with their lead developers, they split off, forked, and became Juma. It happened again in 2006, 2007, 2008. So the beauty of open source is that the code survives even though there might be problems in that community. There are over 75 different open source licenses, but the good news is they kind of boil down to two different types, BSD style licenses and GPL licenses. What I can say is learn the difference between the two. It's really important to you when you actually work with these products and these communities. So uh, a lot of us are uh, cash rich, time poor. Give something back to that community. Financial contributions, anyone can use them, seriously. Uh, if you're a software company, give up your software to these communities. They're not going to afford the software anyway. Often these things are dual license. There's like a commercial license and an open source license. Buy a commercial license if you can actually afford that license. Engage the individual members of that community. Inject money into the economy of that open source community. As much as you can, it keeps it going. Responsible development moves forward. Think about relinquishing the intellectual property that you might have invested in actually bringing your projects forward using those open source communities. So whether you're a hardcore developer or you're just an everyday user, all of these open source projects, they live and breathe, live and die, I should say, on good testimonials 
good word of mouth marketing. It's critical that you get out there and say good things about the community that you love. Last of all, get in the comments. It's, you'll be amazed at the impact that even the smallest change you can have to your community. Thank you.